and Traviata. <laughs> Naga. I feel that Nagaland is quite a small state, no offense. So I think being famous here is something I'm grateful for. I'm sure that I was created to sing. Yeah, because uh, from a young age, I've always been drawn to it. So the first time I ever held a microphone was in Sunday school. I remember singing the song, uh, A Merry Heart. I sang it once and I requested our Sunday school teacher if I can sing again, just so I get to hold the mic. And yeah, I never looked back. You can be making a lot of money in the world, you can be doing the biggest jobs in the world, but if you're not happy, there's no point. Um, God will never give you a gift to put you to poverty. That's what I in a group of friends, I would be the only one saying that I want to be a singer. It's all about uh, having faith, uh, working hard, and uh, knowing that whatever gift you have, it comes from above, so I think you'll, you'll make it. It's amazing. I am a firm believer of positive affirmations. I work hard, there's always a way. So that's how it started. As a, uh, someone who was so passionate about singing, uh, I evolved slowly but consistently. Also, sing like it's your last time on the stage. You know? Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV. I'm your host, Mercy Konyak. Today we are joined exclusively with an authentic artist, a Broadway style singer, songwriter, and also popularly known as Boho Queen. We will be talking about her journey in the music industry, and there are so many things we are going to talk about. So, presenting you all, Kekre Ringa. Hi, Kekre. Hi, thank you for it having is such, me. <laughs> yeah, it is such a pleasure to have you in Hornbill TV. Thank you. And I must say, this is the second time that we are meeting, but on a different set, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Set how is are you? Very good. And how Very are you good. feeling today? Ah, it's so amazing to be like in a proper set, and it's just such a beautiful space. A bit nervous, but very happy, grateful as well. Yes. Congratulations on making it to the Hangama Artist of the Week. Yeah, thank you. Now that you are in the music industry mm -hmm. and people, they started to know you, they started to love your music, uh -huh. and they are also getting the taste of your music. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Wow, to be able to share my art um, to the audience has been a blessing that was a dream and to see it evolving coming through one step at a time has been very uh, very rewarding when you first started did you think that um, you will become a celebrity one day did you have oh that thought gosh. wow ah oh, well to be honest uh, as proud as I am to be a Naga I don't consider myself a celebrity yet. I hate fake modesty, but to be honest, like Nagaland is a small state. Mm -hmm. So to be known by the general mass, masses here, you know, it, it's a blessing, but at the same time, it's nothing to brag about yet. Yeah, so I don't consider myself one yet. So uh, Kikre, mm -hmm. like you've been in the music industry for over a decade now. A lot of the people, they love your music. Mm -hmm. How, you know, <laughs> how you evolved from a normal girl, Kekre Ringa, mm -hmm. to a boho queen. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us something about that? Okay, well, I have never looked at it that way. I think singing, I mean, living my life as a daughter, a vocal teacher, mm -hmm. an artist, entertainer, educator, uh, they all like come in in one package mm -hmm. and uh, I wouldn't say I'm not normal anymore everything is quite mundane when I'm not performing on stage but uh, to see myself evolve and grow in all these uh, aspects of life like I said it's 
It's a continuous journey, which I'll be, you know, going through till my last breath. I'm always wanting to learn, always looking for new people where I can get something from, learn from. Mm -hmm. So it's been a beautiful journey, but I know that there is uh, still a long way to go. Uh, you have such a powerful and sweet story to tell. Uh, you consider yourself as a bohem. Mm -hmm. You are called popularly called as <laughs> boho queen. We really wanted to know the culture of uh, boho. Could you okay. enlighten us? Okay. Um, it's not a religion. It's just, you mm. know, to do with the arts and culture. Um, I'm glad that people are noticing it and there are so many people who are asking me, uh, me about it. Um, it's not a costume. It's a, it's a mm. culture that I was born with. There are some things we're born with. So along with uh, the gift of singing, I think I was just inclined to it naturally, you know, the, the Bohemian culture naturally. Um, I've always been drawn to warm, cozy places, lanterns, giant plants, or um, I like sleeping on the floor. I have no sense of fashion, oh plus God. I can't afford it as well. I just wear whatever I feel like. Uh, and my hair is usually in a mess. Mm. And uh, I just Googled it one day, just wanting to know what kind of mm. uh, category that kind of, you know, admiration falls mm. into. So yeah, I came to uh, across the term and the, the boho singer, the boho artist came into being. Yeah. I must say that we got to learn something about different culture too. Yes. Okay, Kray, mm -hmm. like being the only child in your family and I'm yeah. sure that there are expectations from your yes. parents. Uh, everyone we say like most of the parents they prefer a government job over private. How was your reaction when you first get into music industry mm -hmm. and I'm mm -hmm. sure that uh, you know the decisions will be tough so how yeah. was your experience? Okay. Well, if I were to talk about it, it would take up quite some time. Just to, some, like, just to uh, say it in short, I think there has been a big leap, you know, in, the, in our parents' generation and our generation. There has been like a, such a huge step, a, a big mm. jump that we all took. Mm. And uh, when they came to know that, or eventually when they noticed that I was quite drawn into singing, mm. Um, they liked it, but at the same time, they were quite scared because they want the best for me. And for our parents, government job is the most secure thing. So that That's came out of love and they care about us. They want me to be financially independent and do well in life. Mm. So there were some uh, arguments that happened, you know, yes. which is normal. But uh, I think uh, when they saw the passion in me, they saw me working hard towards it, performing and also getting paid for it, mm. they started to uh, support. Are you happy, like, um, after uh, taking this decision? Mm -hmm. Were you happy that of you course. took the decision for yourself, <laughs> I'm, I'm yes, sure? Yes, of course. I mean, my dreams are so big, I can't accommodate anyone else's dream mm. right now. And uh, it's simple, actually. I believe that I was born to sing. Mm. We have a living God. We're gifted for a purpose. And if God gave me the gift of singing without fear, why would I fear? Mm. So I just sing because I love to sing and I'm very happy. And um, I sleep peacefully at night. Wow. And I say that because that's something money cannot buy. That's, that's true, that's yeah. true. Peace, peace is the only thing that we all need. Peace, happiness and love. Yes. And so, uh, Kekria, I really mm. wanted to ask you, uh, mm. not comparing to anything, or but let's take into account the artists from your generations mm. and mm. the artists from today's generations. Yes. What do you think, like, do you think that it's more comfortable for today's artists to come on set, to come up with a quality set of music mm. because they have availability of the platform they are getting now, comparing mm. to the back then generation? So mm. what do you say on this? Oh, it's quite subjective actually. Even artists, like, there are so many genres. Yes. So there are some genres that are preferred here. Some mm. are still making their way into the mm. arts and music industry. I mean, here in Nagaland. Um, both the generations, mm. I think, have their own struggle. We had our own struggles. Mm. We still have some things that we struggle with. The upcoming singers, mm. uh, 
the young generation, I would mm. say, they have their own share of struggles. Mm. See, when we started, we did not have Instagram or any proper digital platforms. That's so we did not true. have much competition mm. at the same time. Yes. Not much music schools. I think there were barely any music schools when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And mm. no one educated us about uh, music theory or, you know, that music was a complete subject on its own, something that we should study mm. to go, you know, to pursue it as mm. a career or profession. Um, so we had the struggle of doing anything manually, doing everything on our own, even explaining to our, mm. uh, the, the older generation, you know, that yes. music is an art, we can make a living out of it. Those were the struggles, well, yes. uh, we know, a few of the many struggles that we faced. Mm. And with the present generation, I think, uh, they're struggling to stay relevant and relatable at the same time because there's so much pressure on them to sound a, a certain way, to look a certain way, to make it. Mm -hmm. And I understand. And it's very easy uh, for all of us actually to lose our authenticity on the quest of becoming uh, a trend. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the struggle I think the present young generation are going through. And there's too many competition That's because there's too true, many yeah. platforms and it's so easy to even go viral overnight. Yes, so I think the competition true. is more tough now. Mm. We also see that a lot of the Naga artists, they are making a huge wave in the music industry in Nagaland. Yes. And mm. also we see a lot of positive development mm. in the Naga music industry. Mm. As a musician, mm. Mm. we put a lot of efforts sleep last night mm. and also uh, to make an album to make come up with any kind of content yeah. in we see that uh, the soundtrack the sound system the artistic features everything has become a top notch mm. so um, do you think that the artists like putting the lots of efforts mm. on their mm. content on mm. their quality and mm. not getting monetary returns yes. is a success or what do you say on this okay ah uh, I spent a good amount of money mm. getting a degree in music. Mm. Any final product, any good product goes through a lot of hard work and filtering. That's true. Yeah. So it'll be good if we don't abuse each other's talents mm. for free also. That's and uh, there are times I sing for free, I do it you know, out of charity or if it's mm. say a funeral or something, then you know, we don't charge. Mm. Um, other than that, it would be good if you pay for the services that are provided. It's just, it's business at the same time. We're yes, making a living out of it. That's we need to uh, respect each other's profession, mm. no matter how big or small it is. And for example, just because you are not paying me, mm. I'm not gonna sing horribly. I'm still going to deliver. I'm still going to sing my best. You still get the end product, you know? So I think respect is the word for any mm. profession. Yeah. And That's we need to speak out as well, even for upcoming artists as well. You know, have your press kit, your tech mm. writers ready. If you have a manager, very good for you. Even if you don't have one, mm. you should know your worth. Like, um, people say I'm humble. Okay, maybe I am, but I know my worth. You don't mess with someone who has that's worked so hard in her life. That's absolutely yeah. true. I must say that you have put a lot of effort on it, mm -hmm. on your musical journey. No, tell us, how was the journey so far as a musician, now that you are an, an independent yes. artist? So how was your journey as a musician? Okay. Uh, maybe some people look up mm. to me, <laughs> not <laughs> everyone. Um, the journey. I wouldn't have had uh, most of the amazing experiences I've had so far if I was not a singer mm. I wouldn't have met amazing people mm. in my life if I was not a singer mm. I wouldn't have enjoyed some of the privileges mm. that I've enjoyed to be honest if mm. I were not a singer so I'm just very very grateful mm. um, I'm not religious religious but I'm spiritual I pray a lot mm. you know God comes before anything mm, that's you know true. I would never say that music is everything because that would be a lie God mm. created music so he he is everything and I've had a beautiful journey like I've had my share of ups and downs mm. I've lost uh, my mom mm. my dog I've lost a lot of good friends and people I know along the way but at the same time th that's what life is that's it, yeah that's it. and uh, it also gives me a reason to keep going on and mm. 
to leave something, wanting to leave behind something that people can listen to and remember me by. Mm. Yeah. Yes. I must say there is uh, pain and beauty. Yes. And <laughs> I can see that with all the struggles, with all the things that you have mm. faced, mm. it has created the personal heroism in you. And I must say that you are such a brave and you have put yourself so well, you have carried yourself so well Trying and it's <laughs> really it's amazing. So Kekre, um, mm. could you talk about some of your challenges mm. that you have faced like working in this music industry? Mm. Mm. Could you tell us some of the challenges that you have faced that has manifested mm. themselves in your music? Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's too many actually, mm. but maybe I can share just one or two. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people see the glam, the mm. glamour, when they watch us, you know, maybe in an interview like this, mm. uh, they watch our music videos, they see our pictures, and they see the glamour side of it. Mm. But a lot of people don't know the kind of hard work and dedication that goes that's on into making that. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Like, uh, I worked hard mm. to be here today. If I didn't take my music seriously, if I didn't come up with an album, mm. if I didn't work hard, I wouldn't be interviewed today by such a big channel. That's you know, so I've d I did something to be here. Yes. So people need to realize and appreciate the kind of hard work that goes on behind the scene. Mm. And I wouldn't call myself totally independent because mm. It's always a combined effort. Even mm. for my album, it was Infinity Inc., you know, Asale, Ina, Moko, Liden, like mm. the entire team that uh, helped me so much. Mm. And uh, maybe even for today's interview, you know, it's not just the two of us, there yes. are the, the camera people, uh, the editors, everybody, mm. they all deserve the credit. Yes, so absolutely. it's always, yeah, it's always been a joint effort. Mm. Um, there's always a struggle to stay relevant and stay relatable. Mm. Even my brother, like uh, Nisei, he was, mm. you know, he did a workshop and he mm. spoke on it, and we all related to it. Mm. Everyone's trying so hard. Not everybody, like a lot of us, actually, mm. are misled uh, by the notion that mm. being famous mm. is being successful. There's That's a huge true. difference. You mm. can be famous for doing something stupid as well. That's yes. not success. We should know the difference between fame and success. We mm. should know that. And uh, you can have, you know, everyone in the world following you, you on Twitter, on Instagram. You know, mm. you can have everybody as your friends on Facebook. But if you don't have a good personal relationship with God, the that's one who gave you the gift in the no, first place, you are nobody. Yes, yes, so we have to remember true. that, yeah. And to stay authentic, mm. originality, I think. We are all inspired by uh, a bunch of singers or bands. Mm. I have my inspirations as well. There's so many singers, even here in Nagaland, who inspires me. Mm. But I don't get to a point where I'm just copying them, mm. you know, I'm just like a copy paste, mm. a reflection uh, of them. Yes. So we have to maintain our originality. That's mm. a struggle that even, you know, sometimes I, I have to deal with and I think a lot of upcoming singers also deal with. Every industry has its own dark side. Yeah. So even in the music industry, mm. like could you tell us some of its dark side that the younger generation, the upcoming artists, they really need to know. Mm. So could you please mm -hmm. tell us on that? Mm. Maybe there are some where, you know, those issues are uh, spoken about. There are some, a lot of times where, you know, mm. we just keep quiet. That's true. That's um, true. I think not getting paid on time mm. is an issue as well. Okay, yeah, okay. there are some, some people are going to be quite <laughs> upset with me, but uh, we talk about it, you mm. know. F uh, I'm not targeting any issues. Uh, organizers or even managing team or anybody as such but I think mm. not getting paid on time becomes an issue especially for upcoming singers mm. who don't really speak out mm. and uh, trying to get services for free is mm. also an issue it's literally like uh, I it's a dark side actually that's true, yeah that's uh, in the name of platform mm. yeah and uh, uh, well what else can I say there are some people who feel that, you know, if you have money, mm. you can do anything. You can buy anybody, mm. not anything, N not buy anything, but buy anybody mm. with yes. the money that you have, and it's wrong. Mm. Yeah, if you know what I mean. So I think those things need to stop. We need to uh, keep a check on our morality as well. I'm mm. not an angel. <laughs> um, I have my weaknesses, yeah. you know. I've uh, done things I'm not very proud of, but at the same time, I think, 
we should never sell ourselves for, for fame and money. It's just wrong. Mm. Or break someone's family for fame wow. and money. Yeah. I must say that you have given a good uh, advice to our younger generation that they really needed to know. Mm -hmm. What is the one thing that you, you wanted to see, a change you wanted to see in the music industry in Nagaland? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What changes do you want to see? Okay, um, I don't speak on behalf of anyone. This is just my personal you know, desire, personal uh, opinion that I have. Um, we need to know where to put the seasoned artists. We need mm. to know where to feature the upcoming mm. artists. Everyone's getting mixed up. Mm. It's fun, of course. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, we're far in, uh, better than That's the upcoming true. artists. There's so many upcoming artists who dresses better, who sounds better, who looks better than I am, mm. you know, and I learn from them as well because mm. they have so much to offer. But what I mean is there's there are times where they we need to be separated, mm. you know, and uh, the value credit due credit yes. needs to be given to the upcoming and the seasoned artists as well um, we need to educate the public mm. about the importance of music education as mm. well uh, you can be a very good artist you can be a good performer but it's always rem rem remember that there's someone who's always better than you mm. so the humility um, you know the importance of humility the importance of getting trained Mm. I think needs to be taught to, to all of us, like upcoming artists as well. If you uh, could go back in time mm. and tell to your younger self, okay. uh, what is the one piece of advice that you want to tell to your younger self? Kekre Ringa, <laughs> normal Kekre Ringa, not that boho queen, <laughs> renowned artist. Uh, I would tell myself to just keep going, mm. make more music videos. Mm. And uh, yeah, start writing. Oh. Yeah, as early as possible. It can be just something stupid. It can be anything but just start writing songs. Mm. Very important. Of course, yeah. As a musicians, as in every field, we have our ups and downs. Yes. And did you face any kind of uh, like your most down moment? Mm -hmm. But there is one thing that keeps you going. Mm. What is that? I think anyone in any field goes through criticisms, mm. but I think people in uh, the art industry, mm. they face it more. Mm. Because if you're in front of the camera, in a way you're giving power to the audience to judge you, to mm. belittle you, you know. So in a way you have taken a risk and mm. it, it happens, it comes naturally, it comes with the package actually, mm. trolling and everything. Um, Philippines 4.13, yeah, I can wow. do all things through Christ who strengthens me, has That's kept right. me going. I, it's just, I don't know, it just kept me going for so long and I mm. know that it's going to sustain me mm. for a long time. As a normal person, get mm. mm. to the people, Okay. what message you want to give to them? To those people who have lost uh, their passion, have lost mm. their goals, their dreams. Mm. Mm. So what message you want to give to them? Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time we lose our passion, we give up on our dreams mm. because of society's pressure. Mm. They want us to be something else, they expect something else from us, they want us to be something else. You know, it just, it's the society that makes or breaks us sometimes. That's so I think I would uh, advise you all to pray a lot. Mm. And uh, like they say, if God is with you, who can be against you? Mm. Um, it's easier said than done, mm. I know, because we live in a society where there are, it's, it's a mixture of everybody with mm. all the colors. That's it, yeah, that's is, uh, there are people who would support you. There are some people who don't understand your art, mm. so they just stay away from it. There mm. are some people who don't understand what you're doing, so they make sure that people hate it. And this is something I don't understand about uh, most of our people here. I mean, no offense, but if you, how can you hate something you don't understand? Yes, that's true. If you think true. about it. Um, I think an advice or request, actually, um, even as an artist, maybe, mm. if I can say that, if you don't understand my music, if you don't like what I'm doing, I'm speaking on behalf of every artist right mm. now. If you don't understand uh, our genre, it's okay. Just move to the next table without destroying my music. 
uh, without making sure that even your friends hate it, you know, just mm. move to the next table. It's like a buffet. You like it, have it. If you don't, the next table is yours. Mm -hmm. And number two is uh, just be kind mm -hmm. to, to everybody, irrespective of whatever field they're in, because we're not always in front of the camera. We don't always have makeup on. We're human beings who go to sleep at night, reading your comments, you know? That's so it, in a way, that it affects us as well. Good, bad, everything. We're human beings. We still take it in. So just be kind. Kindness is free. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it won't cost you. Uh, the things that you have said just now, and you have uh, said a lot of encouraging words, mm -hmm. piece of advice, being an artist, and it's so amazing to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being part of Hornville TV. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. So that is all we have for now, a sizzling conversation with Kekreringa. So that is all. Keep watching Hornville TV. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Moko Koza. Today I'm here to talk about my very good friend, Kekreringa. Uh, where shall I start? From letting me sleep in her car during a concert just because I didn't have a proper sleep the previous night to always being that person, always giving out the best advice. Kekre, I'm so lucky to have a friend like you. Uh, we met through this musical journey and after all these years, we're still like sharing the good bond, good friendship and keeping our passion alive. I wish you nothing but the best. You're one of the sweetest person I've ever met and keep on continuing being you and inspire people around you, sending you my love and regards. Yours sincerely. Hi, so I'm Anu Bonaga and uh, talking about Kay Kriving, uh, she is a very professional singer and I've known her for almost a decade now and she's one of the most established singers we have in Ireland. So besides being the artist, she's also working as the uh, as a teacher in Musica and she was the administrator uh, before. She's been working with us for almost three years now and uh, I've known her as an artist, as a human. So she's a very beautiful human, a very compassionate person who is always caring for people around her and uh, she's like a mother figure to everyone around her and uh, very professional in her work and also uh, she is someone who delivers so very very uh, fortunate to have her to know her as as a friend and also uh, she's very mischievous for those who don't know she seems very very nice but if you are close with her she can be very both ones also but she's an amazing person and we are so blessed to have her in New Zealand.